Good morning. This is the time and place for the planning hearing officer's hearings for September 8th, 2010. My name is Laura Stotler and I will be conducting the hearings as hearing officer. Uh, we have four cases today and relevant exhibits are posted on the panels located directly behind me. Um, of the four cases that we have on today, we're going to take them out of order. So the first case is going to be 1434 and Andonese Drive. Is that just to let you know if so if you're here for 1610 East Colorado or for tw uh, 2612 Honolulu, just want to warn you that we will be out of order. So um, another hearing officer is going to be following me to hear those cases. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.43 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a variant shall be granted if four required findings are present. One, that the strict application of the ordinance re results in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship inconsistent with the general purposes and intent of the ordinance. That there are exceptional circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved or to the intended use or development of the property that do not apply generally to other property in the same zone or neighborhood. Three, that the granting of the variance will not be materially detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property or improvements in such zone or neighborhood in which the property is located and four, that the granting of the variance will not be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance. And we also have conditional use permits on the agenda. Under the provisions of Title 30, Chapter 30.42 of the Glendale Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be granted if four required findings are present. They are that the proposed use will be consistent with the elements and objectives of the general plan, that the use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or the environment, that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property. And the fourth finding is that adequate public and private facilities, that's utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. If the evidence present in the, in the application and at this hearing meets the criteria just described, then the planning hearing officer can either approve or impose conditions for approval on the case in question. If the findings of fact are not evident, then the request will be denied. Notification of this hearing was accomplished by the use of public notices which were mailed to property owners located within 500 feet of the subject property, physically posted on the site in question, placed in the local newspaper, and also posted on the city's website. Hearings will proceed as follows. I'll read a description of the application request. Then I'll read the reports received from other city departments and other letters or communications received from interested parties. The case planner will then make a brief overview of the case, give analysis, and make a recommendation. The applicant will be asked to come forward stating both name and address and will be asked to present a case within a 15-minute time limit. Others in support of or in opposition to the application and interested parties will be asked to come forward to speak, again clearly stating both name and address within a three minute time limit. Lastly, the applicant will be given an, the opportunity to make closing comments if desired in response to testimonies given by preceding speakers within a five minute time limit. The hearing will be closed and the case taken under submission. After the decision after the hearing, the decision will be prepared in writing and will be in the form of a letter sent to the applicant and to all persons who responded to the public notice, either by speaking at this hearing or by submitting written responses and who have also provided their name and mailing address. The date of the decision will be the date appearing on the letter. Under the appeals provision of Title 30, Chapter 30.62 of the Glendale Municipal Code, the decision may be appealed to the Planning Commission within 15 days of the decision date, and the Notice of Appeal shall be filed with the Building and Safety Division located in MSB 101 of this building. If you wish to speak, please write your name and address in one of the speaker's forms which have been provided by the front door and submitted to our planning staff. It's these forms if you, if you haven't already filled one out. I would like to also inform everyone that the official proceedings of the planning hearing officer's hearings are recorded on tape as part of the public record. So for the first case that we're going to hear today, it's located at 1434 Andonese Drive, case number, thank you, PCUP 2010024 and case number PVAR 2010016. Um, we'll be hearing testimony for both of these cases at the same time. The applicant is John Yankowski, owner is Wen Holai, a case planner is Vilia Zamataitis. This is an application for a conditional use permit to construct a new approximately um, 
1,335 square foot single family dwelling and attached two car garage on a lot with an area of 5,040 square feet and a lot width of 53 feet. A variance is required given that this lot is less than 7,500 square feet, which is the minimum lot size required by the code for lots in the R1R zone. A conditional use permit is requested because the lot is less than 80 feet in width. Uh, site is located at 1434 Andenese Drive in the R1R zone, restricted residential zone floor area district 2. That's described as portions of lots 133 and 55 and of Opichi Way now vacated as shown on a map of track number 250. We have comments from the engineering division noting that there will be a requirement for a grading and drainage plan and the city of Engineero shall approve the discharge of on-site drainage. The applicant shall also perform at its sole expense at no cost to the city the following street improvements along the entire frontage of the property on Andenese Drive in accordance with standard plans for public works construction. Um, it's removing all existing curb gutters, driveway aprons, and sidewalks, and construct new Portland cement concrete integral curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and driveway aprons. Any unused driveway aprons shall be removed and replaced with new Portland cement concrete integral curbs, gutters, sidewalks, landscaping, and irrigation. Um, the applicant shall construct um, driveway aprons in accordance with um, municipal code requirements for driveways. And uh, the entire asphaltic concrete roadway pavement within the vicinity of the property will be inspected after the completion of the construction project. In the event of damage, the applicant will be required to uh, perform any street improvements required to bring it up to standard. And the applicant shall bear all costs involved in relocation, construction, and or adjustment to new finished grade of all utilities, underground and overhead, within the public right-of-way adjacent to the project. And note that there's a separate permits required for all work in the right of way. Project needs to comply with the National Pollutants Discharge Elimination System and PDES requirements. And there's also a note that the site's located within a liquefaction zone as indicated on the State of California Seismic Hazard Zones maps. So it'll be required to comply with all geotechnical and geological reports required. There's just a requirement from the Public Works Maintenance Services Urban Forester just that an indigenous tree permit shall be obtained for any work on or near and around um, any protected trees. And there's a note that there's one coast live oak tree adjacent to the property. So the applicant will need to preserve that tree. There's also encroachment that appears that it will be required um, to build this property, so the encroachment will be upon that tree, so they'll need to um, take precautions uh, to minimize the impacts from the encroachment. And there's a note from Neighborhood Services that there's an open case on this property for building code violations, um, which were referred to the city attorney's office. Uh, it looks like once all remaining wall structures have been demoed on the site, the case will be closed. So I'm assuming the case is now closed. From traffic and transportation, there's a comment that just says the driveway must be constructed to the satisfaction of the city engineer. Go 
from the fire department. It's noted that the project is located in an area with restricted access and our narrow streets, limited turnaround capability for emergency vehicles. Um, the new building will have to have approved address numbers. A complete automatic fire sprinkler system shall be installed throughout the structure. Smoke detector shall be wired to the building electrical system and shall be equipped with battery backup and emit a signal when batteries are low. Let's also note that the project is located in a fire, high fire hazard area and must comply with all related regulations. All landscaping fuel modifications shall comply with the Hillside Development Landscape Guidelines and plans must be submitted um, and a fire permit approved. And the building material and material assemblies for the projects within a high fire hazard area shall comply with Section 703A of the um, Building Code. And we have general uh, comments received from Glendale Water and Power. This is from Electrical. And there's a note of the, the type of uh, requirements that they're going to have and a referral that says they should contact customer service to determine electrical service requirements before starting permitting. And they'll also be responsible for maintaining a 10-foot radio clearance from all overhead electrical lines during construction. So I know that the electrical lines for this project are at the rear of the site, so they'll have to maintain that during, during the construction. And all fees will be responsibility of the applicant. And comments from the Glendale Water and Power, the water section, is that the applicant is responsible for the current cost of water service or fire line in accordance with the current water fee schedule. And the applicant will need to connect to the, the water. And also the applicant will be responsible for making sure that there's adequate fire flow. There will also be a backflow prevention device requirement. And that concludes the comments I've received from other departments. And I don't see any other letters in the file. None other received. Okay. And um, with that, I'd like to ask the case planner to provide an overview of the project. Yes, good morning. The case involves a conditional use permit request to construct a single family dwelling on a lot that is less than 80 feet in width. In this case, this particular lot, as you mentioned, is 53 feet wide and also a standards variance to construct a new dwelling on a lot that's less than 75,000 square feet, in which case this particular lot is 5,040 square feet. Um, the lot was previously occupied by a single family home that was constructed in 1924, so it's been occupied since 1924 with a single family home up until July 2000 of this year. This case comes to us after a very lengthy and complicated history. Uh, there were multiple, multiple additions made to this home without building permits. Uh, this was, had been an active co-enforcement case for a number of years, since 2004. Um, this also has already been relayed to the city attorney's office for enforcement. And as such, um, the previous property owner unfortunately passed away prior to resolving the issues and a, the new current property owner bought the property at, an, at a public auction and thus inherited the code enforcement case. The possibilities regarding this code enforcement case were either A, to bring the property back into compliance with code, which in this case the last reported use was a, an approximately 800 square foot single family detached home in a one car garage. Um, I'll go ahead and list that here. You'll notice that this is Andonese Drive down um, to the south along this pro uh, site plan. The last reported use was a one car garage and then a detached 800 square foot home on the 5,000 square foot lot. Um, with the multiple additions, there was an illegal second story, there was an illegal breezeway, there was an illegal kitchen created, 
and the new current property owner having inherited the property in, in its present condition was faced with two alternatives, either to bring the property back to the detached single family home and the one car garage, which would have entailed multiple, um, multiple issues regarding building permits and whatnot and financially feasible, or to go ahead and completely level the lot. But then by leveling the lot, it's considered new construction. That's requiring a conditional use permit for the lot width and a standards variance for the lot size. And therefore, the property owner elected to go ahead, level the eyesore, which had been a, a neighborhood blight for a number of years, and essentially eliminate the code enforcement case, thus creating a vacant lot, starting brand new fresh. And so now they are proposing uh, an approximately 1,300 square foot home. It does have an attached two car garage. Um, you'll notice the orientation is slightly different, but it's still very straightforward. It's an attached two car garage. Uh, the, the project complies with all of the zoning code requirements, except for the lot size and the lot width, in which case that's requiring the CEP and the variance that, we're here, that you are hearing today. Let me go back to the desk then. Okay, with that, with that background, um, in order for you to go ahead and grant the, the variance and the conditional use permit request, four findings need to be made. Four findings for the variance and four findings also for the conditional use permit as required by law. Um, I will go ahead and address the findings for the variance first. Okay. Um, now, First finding would be that the strict application of the provisions of the ordinance would result in practical difficulties or unnecessary hardship inconsistent with the general purposes and intent of the ordinance. Um, again, to repeat, you know, this lot is an existing 5,040 square foot lot. There had been a home on it uh, that had been constructed since, you know, in 1924. It's been occupied since then. The proposed residence is considered a new construction, so it would need to meet that 7,500 square foot rule according to today's zoning code. However, all of the lots in the surrounding area are developed with single family homes, so there is no opportunity to go ahead and combine the lot, combine a, an adjacent empty parcel to, to reach that 7,500 square foot threshold. Furthermore, all of the lots adjacent also since they are occupied and it have been developed with single family homes, the lot, lot, lot lines adjustments would not be feasible as well. So uh, this is an existing condition that in order for us to go ahead and proceed, you know, it, it would essentially render an undevelopable vacant lot for in perpetuity if a, if a variance was not granted. The second finding would be that there are exceptional circumstances or conditions applicable to the property involved or intended use and development of the property that do not generally apply to other property in the same zone or neighborhood. This particular instance, again, um, there are additional lots in the, in the exact neighborhood. Uh, you'll notice on the the photograph that's behind on the screen, actually on the television screen, this is a neighborhood aerial photograph that you see before you and into the back. There are four adjacent parcels. Uh, it would be, this is the parcel in question, the subject property lot. You have one directly behind it, two, three, and four, and then there's one that's not in the aerial photograph within 100 feet that have lot sizes that are less than the required 7,500 square foot minimum. So there are existing conditions in the surrounding area that uh, do have single family homes developed on substandard lots. So this would not be an unusual set of circumstances. Um, the, it is a modest size house that is, pro is proposed. Uh, it will provide a useful and functional building, which addresses the needs of the residents. And this particular project would be subject to the Design Review Board review. So its compatibility in terms of mass and scale, site planning, and architectural uh, will be reviewed at the Design Review Board level. But staff, in, its, in our analysis, based on Code Section 30.11.040, um, thus granting the, the hearing officer the right in terms of 
any discretionary approvals, making sure that it's complying with the hillside design standards and all applicable criteria. It is compatible. It is, it's a modest scale size home. It's only 1,300 square feet, 1,300. Um, it's consistent with other homes in the neighborhood. It is a single story, so it is relatively low in scale, and the site planning is uh, consistent with other type, or compatible and comparable with other homes in the area. The third finding for the variance would be that the granting of the variance will not be detri material detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to the property or improvements in such zone or neighborhood in which the property is located. Again, and, the, and it's, it's an existing lot, 5,040 square feet. It featured a single family home for over 80 years uh, in terms of its demolition. You know, they are proposing a brand new home. So um, they have since eliminated a blight to the neighborhood, which had multiple, multiple illegal additions. Um, and so, and therefore, there, we do not anticipate that it will be materially detrimental to the public welfare injurious because they are just constructing a brand new home which would comply with all of the building code issues, all of the other um, zoning code development standards as well. And last but not least, that the granting of the variance would not be contrary to the objectives of the ordinance. Um, the objectives of the ordinance, essentially this is located in an R1R zone. Um, it is intended for single family development. It would not be contrary to the objectives other than the fact that it is on a substandard size lot and a substandard size width. Um, it would essentially uh, create a usable development for a lot that is currently now vacant that was always intended for since its original subdivision in back in the early um, 19, I mean, in the early 1900s intended for single family home. With that said, uh, I'd like to go on to the required findings for the conditional use permit. Okay. The first one being that the, the use is consistent with the various elements of the general plan. Um, the land use element in the, for this particular subject property designates it for low density residential. Again, this is a low density residential single family dwelling project. Uh, it's consistent with our housing element, which encourages single family residences. It's currently served by Andenes Drive, which is a local collector street. Um, it's not designated for any parks. It's consistent with the open space and conservation element. Um, all of the surrounding homes in the area are currently developed with single family residents, so it would be compatible with the neighborhood context. Um, second item would be that the use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, general welfare, or the environment. And the, so again, this is for the conditional use permit being the, the lot width is less than 80 feet. Um, in regards to its previous, its, its um, original subdivision, you know, it was subdivided with a lot width of 53 feet way back in the day. Um, they are proposing just to redevelop the property with another single family home. Um, we do not anticipate that it will be detrimental to the surrounding properties, which again are currently developed with single family homes. And as noted, the same three that are substandard in terms of lot sizes are also substandard in lot widths as well. So there are uh, numerous, and I believe out of my analysis, out of all the homes within a 300 foot radius, there are 17 that are substandard in width. So there are um, numerous precedents in the surrounding area showing that there are similar developments on substandards lots or substandard width. Uh, the third finding would be that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with the adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding properties. Um, same, same issue again. It's been developed for over 80 years with a single family home. Uh, the lot width will not result in the crowding of adjacent, how, of, of adjacent homes. Uh, the particular proposal involves a subject um, home that provides the 10 foot required setback. The previous home had a, a setback that was approximately less than four feet on one side. Because this is a new construction, it's required to address all of the current development standards for R1R construction. So as you'll notice on the site plan on the wall, 
uh, the home, the current proposal, actually has really um, had its interior setbacks reduced. So now both on the north, south, and on the west, which is essentially all of the interior setbacks, it is, pro it is providing a 10-foot required setback. So there's ample uh, separation between the adjacent neighbors, so there is no overcrowding in this. We don't perceive it to have any type of adverse or, or conflicts with adjacent uses. And last but not least, uh, that adequate public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, and traffic circulation measures are provided for. This, is, this had been a single family home. All of the utilities are in place. They are providing a two car garage for the 1,300 square foot home, uh, which is consistent with code. Uh, the project provides the required landscape areas and um, complies with all other, except for the existing width of the lot area, lot and the existing lot area, the project meets all other applicable zoning rules and regulations. That concludes my presentation. Um, the applicant, Mr. John Yankowski, who is the architect on record for the project, is available in the audience to answer any questions you may have, and <coughs> I'm available to answer any questions you may have as well. I just want to clarify, what is this front setback? The front setback for this particular property is 15 feet. It is located in the R1R zone, so it is a 15-foot setback. However, because the garage is uh, taking access off Andenese Drive, the driveway standards by our zoning code require an 18-foot wide, or 18-foot long driveway. So the house is set back, or in this case, the garage is set back an additional three feet above the front setback for a total of 18 feet to provide that required driveway length. <coughs> Okay, I don't have any other questions. So I do have cards from, I have three cards. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak on this item? If you do, please turn in a, a card now. I'd like to call forward Mr. Yankowski. My name is John Yankowski. I'm the designer of the project, 4542 New York Avenue, La Crescenta. And uh, basically, I, I can't add much more. The staff done a complete uh, report. Uh, so I really can't add much. Uh, that she's pretty well covered everything. Uh, the project had a history, and it was very unfortunate. Um, and we had uh, two alternatives. We could either restore the existing house back to the original concept that there were no records of uh, and basically we decided that what we would end up with would be an 800 square foot house with a one car garage and it just wouldn't be feasible so we basically decided to uh, demo the project and uh, propose a new project that was very uh, Modest uh, and met all the mass and the scale and compatibility with the neighborhood and uh, it, it was a real improvement to the neighborhood. We didn't attempt to do a massization and anything like that. So in scale, it, it's much smaller than anything in the neighborhood actually. And uh, like I say, the existing was a blight to the neighborhood. Uh, you'll you'll hear people and uh, there was real problems. So. The project we're proposing is a uh, very modest uh, Spanish uh, that'll meet the design review board uh, requirements. So uh, staff pretty well covered uh, it. So I think uh, as long as I'm ahead, I might as well just stop talking and I see if there's any questions. Okay. Um, actually, Mr. Yankowski, as as requested, you do need to read off the required findings that were submitted as part of the application. Oh, okay. Down on the variance and the CUP? Correct. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, the CUP was, uh, we have a proposed uh, residence that will meet the, all these setbacks, the front, the rear, and the side yards, and it meets the lot coverage and the FAR requirements, the uh, footage radio area. Number two was... Uh, the resident is in keeping with the uh, neighborhood area. Number three was uh, the proposed residence will not adversely affect adjacent uses or all areas in the R1 property. 
Uh, D, explain uh, the public and private facilities as utilities. Uh, the landscaping to be provided uh, per landscape plan, I think that was 40%. Uh, we're providing a new two-car garage in lieu of an existing one-car garage with uh, compatib- capable of parking two cars in front of the garage. And we have a proposed setback of 18 feet. Uh, let me get my uh, variance copy. Okay. Okay, the variance. Uh, number one, uh, the strict application of provisions will result in a lot, lot that is unbuildable, so we'd have an unbuildable site. Uh, uh, there's no way we'd resolve that problem. Uh, number two, the existing residence, which additions were not permitted to be uh, demolished at the present time, resident is not habitable and is detrimental to the area, etc. Number three, uh, why will the granting of the variance not be detrimental to the building welfare? At, uh, the proposal will be in keeping with the design guidelines and building zone codes. Number four, why will the granting of the variance be in keeping with the objectives of the ordinance? The granting of the variance will be uh, in a, will enable the existing non-conforming uh, residence to be removed and build a new uh, one-story residence. Uh, statement of additional facts. Uh, the city attorney issued an order for... Uh, well, it's a long history with the city attorney thing, but we resolved it by demoing the property and clearing it. Um, so now we have a vacant uh, 5,040 square foot lot, uh, and we just request that we can uh, build a modest residence on it. Okay. Okay. So, are there any questions? Now, did you you heard the comments that I heard from other departments that were included in the file? Yes. Do you have any problems complying with no any problem. of those? No problem. We comply with all the restrictions and codes. And then I do have a question. It looks like you've moved the driveway location from where the, the previous driveway is to the new one. Is there a reason for that? Is generally in a hillside property, you'll put the driveway on the, the lower side of the lot. I'm just curious why why you were moving. Oh, it's uh, there's an angle on the front of the lot. And with the 18-foot setback with the car parking in front of the garage door, I was able to get a couple... Uh, more feet on the depth of my building. So that was a reason uh, that it, it went that way. Uh, okay, and I noticed there's a, a tree, a large tree, that's near where your new driveway is proposed. Are you uh, going to preserve that tree? We're clear of the oak tree. Uh, so you're going to preserve that tree? I'm going to preserve the oak tree and uh, deal with the drip line. But it's, uh, it's on the, the front corner, and we're going to completely stay away from that. Okay. I just want to make sure you're aware of it and yeah. make sure and that all that the was other trees on the property were just uh, little, uh, very small trees. I, I, we didn't remove, you know, any major tree. The oak was the major tree. Okay. Okay. And then the site plan says that there's a block wall to the rear. Yet when I went out to the site, I noticed there's part of it that doesn't have a block wall. Are you intending to replace and, that? Uh, the property behind us has a history of uh, the old owner in a crouched on their property with the block wall. And so we had a survey made and uh, the block wall was on the owner's property. So we had to remove that and we're going to replace the block wall another foot in on our property. So okay. that, that's why it was uh, it was, it was taken out. So you will replace it. Right. Okay. Just okay. clarifying. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And then the next card I have is from Lindsay Soderland, followed by Myrna Stanley. I have to read. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Lindsay Soderland, and I live on Opeachy, directly behind 1434 Andinas, where the property right behind it. I've seen the plans and I'm very satisfied that everything is code compliant, therefore I definitely support building a structure on this site. I need to take this opportunity though too to say something about the new owners, Jeremy and Eric. They have been wonderful. After buying the property, they made it a point to go and to meet all of the affected neighbors. 
Since I guess we're the most affected, both men asked if we had any requests. We had three. One, we asked for an exterminator because the house had been vacant for a year and we were afraid when demo started the critters would start running. They got an exterminator. Um, they, we asked that they let us know when things were going to happen. Eric sent me a timeline. And then we asked that that wall be taken down. And it was the happiest day in my life when I heard that thing start to go. So if we had any questions whatsoever, Eric responded to me immediately. So I just want you to know that Eric and Jeremy are wonderful, wonderful neighbors. And finally, I want to take this opportunity too to thank all of the people in the city of Glendale who worked so very hard on this issue for so, so many years. We're grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thanks. And Myrna Stanley? Good morning. Uh, Myrna Stanley, Verdugo Woodlands West Homeowners Association. Uh, for the record, we'd like you to know that we fully support um, grant making the findings for the various entitlements. Um, and this is a very satisfying day for um, our board members because, frankly, we were wondering if any one of us was going to live long enough to see this project conclude. Uh, we became involved eight years ago um, when there was obviously construction going on and, and no one was notified and we called and we found out that the former owner um, had requested a permit to install windows on the second story when in fact it was a single story home. So it went downhill from that. But we are very satisfied and we look forward to the design review process. Thank you. Okay. And is the applicant, do you have any concluding comments you'd like to make? Uh, no, thank you. No, thanks? Okay. Um, I see no other cards. Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing no one. Um, I will now take this item under submission and let me see what our next case is. Wait for the next hearing officer. Yeah, would you? Um, we'll take a short recess. Gavel. Yeah.
Okay, we're back in session. Let me open the next case. Uh, case number PCUP 2010-009 at 1610 East Colorado Street. Uh, this is continued from August 11th and August 25th. It's an application for a conditional use permit to allow massage services at a new day spa within a 1,156 square foot commercial unit located at 1610 East Colorado Street in the C3 Commercial Service Zone, Height District 1. Let's see, the applicant is Zhang Yu um, Piao. The owner is Antonio, the property owner is Antonio Lombardo. And. Um, with that, let me have our case planner, Mr. Combs, introduce the case and give an overview. Good morning, Mr. Hearing Officer. Is that volume okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, the CUP this morning is being requested after the expiration of the previous CUP number 10754-CU in January, which allowed the therapeutic massage service with referral by an on-site chiropractor, acupuncturist, or other medical doctor only within a medical office. The existing establishment is located in the shopping center at the corner of Eagledale Avenue and Colorado Street in a multi-tenant, one-story commercial building. The subject site is unique in that the building resides within two municipal jurisdictions, both Los Angeles and Glendale. The business today is requesting approval in one of the units located completely within Glendale. The subject unit and another adjacent unit are currently occupied by an existing medical office, CHS Healthcare Incorporated, and together are approximately 2,400 square feet. The proposed, the proposed massage establishment is requesting to utilize approximately 1,156 square feet of the existing 2,400 square foot medical office. The remaining area will be maintained as a medical use by a separate future tenant. The police department indicated the subject site has had a history of noncompliance and inability to adhere to the conditions of approval of the expired of an expired CUP, which allowed massage services. Additional comments specify multiple arrests had occurred for prostitution at the location. Police recommended that should the CUP be granted, that it only have a short period of validity before it be reapplied for. The Community Planning Department Neighborhood Services Division commented there is an active code enforcement case for this business regarding the history of noncompliance, as previously mentioned by the police department's comments. Additionally, it was noted that the massage service was still being administered after the expiration of the previous CUP. The Neighborhood Service Division recommends, I believe they recommend denial of this application. Uh, representatives are here in the audience if you have any questions after my presentation. Um, a brief history of the site. On August 19th, 2002, the zoning administrator approved the application for conditional use permit case number 10377-CU to allow massage services at the existing chiropractic and acupressure business at 1610 East Colorado. One of the conditions of approval required that massage services be for therapeutic use as referred by the on-site chiropractor, acupuncturist, or medical doctor. This approval was valid until January 31st, 2010. In January of 2005, an application was made to remove the requirement that the massage clients receive referral. This application case number 10754 was denied by the zoning administrator in May. The previous CUP, however, was still valid and the business was allowed to conduct massage therapy with referrals. The denial met with an appeal to the Planning Commission by the applicant to overturn the Zoning Administrator's decision. The Planning Commission sustained the Zoning Administrator's denial. On March 1, 2010, this submitted an application for Conditional Use Permit PCP 2008-008, requesting approval for massage services within an existing medical office. Later that month, on the 29th, the applicant amended the request to allow massage services at a new day spa since expiration of the conditional use permit, CHS Healthcare Incorporated currently operates as a medical office with massage service. The applicant is proposing to change the medical office to a day spa with massage service and would be located within a single commercial unit addressed as 1610 East Colorado Street. The proposed unit, um, again, will be 1,156 square feet.
Based upon the history of the site and the current operator applicant, the proposed day spa with massage services may present challenges for the area as the business has proven on multiple occasions that it has ignored the required conditions of approval of the previous CUP. Further, the business has been the object of several police actions that has impacted the quality of life and safety, which are stated goals of the general plan and zoning code for the general welfare of the neighboring businesses and residences. Overall, the applicant's desire for a day spa with massage service appears unsupportable based on the facts surrounding this application. That is the conclusion of my presentation. I'll be here for any further questions, as is the neighborhood services division. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's hear from the applicant. Who's representing the applicant today? Okay. Come forward and give your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Good morning. Dante Charleston, 3700 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 2020, Los Angeles 90010. Before I start, let me go ahead and give you a couple of exhibits. Okay. You can give those to Mr. Combs. Thank you. <clears throat> As stated, um, the proposed uh, the proposed business is going to be a walk in <clears throat> excuse me, a walk in and membership based day spa in the commercial services zone C three, providing professional services consisting of massage therapy, facials, manicure and pedicure and manicure and pedicure treatments, uh, and associate and associated products with hand, foot and facial maintenance will also be provided uh, to the uh, for sale to the clients. The <clears throat> we understand that there has been a history at this location. However, what I'd like to do is to present uh, some what we believe to be um, mitigations to the past history and also to clarify uh, that the new owners um, really have not had um, really have not had many of the issues that were cited. Uh, in the um, in the planning uh, planning report, as I mentioned, there's going to be expanded services, manicure, uh, panic, manicure, manicures, pedicures, facials, and massage therapy are going to be the additional services in a day spa environment. Uh, what you have before you is a operations plan and a plan that's going to indicate what the mandatory training would be uh, for its employees and management. There's an operations plan um, which will be reviewed by the applicant. The operations plan would have to be read by all employees and signed. And as you will note uh, on the last page of that, that the that management will not tolerate any um, any activities contrary to the health and, w and well-being uh, of the community. Uh, in addition to the massage therapists, the estheticians, uh, individuals doing facials, all state requirements and, and permits um, must be obtained. In addition to that, uh, each new employee will have a, uh, a background check um, obtained by the owner to ensure, um, to doubly ensure that the individual meets the standards of this new business. Um, I'd like to also bring up that the applicant is resizing the uh, entire scope of the business. For example, the, the previous uh, business was twice the size of the the current proposed business, the current proposed business is going to occupy um, 1,156 square feet uh, on that lot. Uh, 
if I can direct you to the the um, findings that um, okay, and I, I'd like to go through and, and the findings will will kind of break down um, what we believe some of the major um, uh, mitigating factors that we are proposing today. <clears throat> the proposed use this is. Um, there's four findings that need to be made. The, that the proposed use will be consistent with the various elements and objectives of the general plan. Uh, the use is consistent with the various ele elements and objectives of the general plan in that a day spa is allowed in the C3 commercial zone. The proximity to residential area, multifamily, will be significant, a, a significant benefit to in as much as potential clients are within short commute uh, from the existing use. Moreover, um, uh, some may walk uh, to seek the beauty services to include manicures, pedicure treatments, professional esthetician, uh, which will provide uh, facial consultation and treatments, and provide recommendations to clients to sustain skin care between appointments. In addition, the spa, the spa treatments um, clients will have access to massage therapy to include aromatherapy massage, reflexology massage, deep tissue massage, and I included uh, other types of massage therapy and facial treatments in the um, security and operations plan. Now to address some of the issues of this site, um, we all understand that there has been some history. Um, the applicant took sole ownership of the medical office business at the subject location on November of 2009. Now, there had been one uh, arrest on site um, by an employee, of which that employee was immediately uh, terminated. And just a little background on that. The new applicant, um, uh, the new applicant purchased, or the new applicant and operator, uh, unfortunately did not understand, did not know the previous history of this site. Additionally, what the new applicant uh, owner did was he uh, hired, she hired um, some of the previous employees of the medical office. Um, what, we, what we propose in, in this request is that two things. One, the business is not operating and has not operated since um, February 23rd of this year. Uh, secondly, no employee who previously worked under any ownership of that location will be hired. The, as I mentioned before, the new owner is going to um, hire new employees. Those employees go through background checks. Uh, and to ensure that a new sense of, of concern for the, for the well-being of the community is preserved. It's, it's important to note that this owner, this new, this new applicant, uh, has had no relations with the previous incidents of this site. And we would hope that with the new business model, with the new policy, with the new procedures, that they will be able to start this new business and give and give and be given the opportunity to demonstrate with a new business model, new ownership, new procedures, the ability to move forward from the past history of this location. Um, Additionally, um, the issue of the conditional use permit expiring, that was an oversight of the applicant, and um, FMG, my firm, is going to provide the, the, the training um, that's going to be required to ensure that they understand all the rules, all the regulations, and to comply with all conditions and voluntary conditions that I'll talk about here in a second. The second um, condition, or the second finding, uh, the use and its associated structure and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health and safety. 
the general welfare, or the environment. The subject property was formerly a medical use office, and thus adequate parking already exists within the shopping center. There will be no intensification of use. With the revision of the business model, services, and open and open revised floor plan designed to include a reduction of total square footage enhances public safety, health, and general well-being welfare of the community. The use and its associated structures and facilities will not be detrimental to the public health or safety, the general welfare or environment. The history of this site had compliance issues. We understand that. But they're going to be addressed via the conditional use process, the revision request, the new business model, and the floor plan, and the security measures that are identified in the security and operations plan to address all these issues and to address the pending uh, issue through neighborhood services uh, on their request of revocating uh, revocation of the zoning certificate. Um, I've spoken with uh, Lieutenant Fox of Glendale Police Department, identified the new business model. He identified what the history was uh, in a law enforcement perspective, and uh, with the provisions and with the voluntary conditions, Lieutenant Fox indicated that um, PD would not have opposition would not have opposition to granting this request. He did indicate, as um, staff indicated, that there be a short time frame um, to reexamine, and, and as a voluntary condition. What the applicant is proposing is that 12 months from the issuance of the zoning certificate and certificate of occupancy, they will come back before this board, before this panel, and, and indicate and show and demonstrate how they have complied with um, all of the voluntary, all the conditions and voluntary conditions that I'll speak of here in a second. The third condition that the use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with adjacent uses or impede the normal development of surrounding property. The use and facilities will not adversely affect or conflict with ad adjacent uses or impede the normal development of the surrounding property. Moreover, due to more, moreover, due to a more open format with health and beauty services, including massage, related services will enhance visibility of the day spa, facilitate a broad-based clientele, and create multiple revenue streams for, uh, from professional services and sale and the sale of, of, um, of beauty supplies associated with uh, a day spa. Additionally, the applicant will, as a voluntary condition, um, require that, of course, all of the massage therapists, the estheticians uh, doing the facials have, of course, all of their state and or local um, licenses, the certificates, and the, uh, the applicant would like to establish a relationship with Glendale Police Department and Neighborhood Services um, to communicate with them, whether it be on a monthly basis um, via email, via phone, et cetera, to always keep the, um, um, the city abreast of um, as they're progressing through their new business model. Uh, again, full transparency, they want to um, overcome the stigma of this site prior to um, them being a part of uh, um, operating um, uh, this business and show the community and show the city um, that this is a new beginning and, and that, that they would like that opportunity to show that um, they can move forward from the past history uh, of this location. As I mentioned before, all therapists will, will undergo a separate background check instituted by the applicant or owner um, to ensure uh, in addition to what the state does to ensure that um, they 
they obtain the most qualified individuals um, uh, relative to uh, their background. Uh, if you look at the last uh, page of the of the findings, there's a list. There are seven uh, conditions, voluntary conditions, that the applicant will um, adhere to. Uh, the first condition, that the development shall be in substantial accord with the plan submitted with the application and presented at the hearing, except for any modifications as may be required to meet specific code requirements, code standards, or other conditions stipulated herein to the satisfaction of the hearing officer. Number two, that all licenses, permits, as required, or approvals from federal, state, county, and city authorities, including the city clerk, shall be obtained and kept current at all times. Number three, that all necessary permits, building, fire, engineering, etc., shall, shall be obtained from the building and safety section and all construction shall be in compliance with Glendale Building Code and all other applicable regulations. Number four, that the premises be maintained in a clean and orderly condition, free of weeds, trash, graffiti, etc. Number five, that the premises shall be made available to any authorized city personnel, fire and police, for inspection to ascertain that all conditions of approval of the conditions, uh, conditional use permit are complied with. Number six, conditional use permit subject to um, that, the con that a conditional use permit subject to revocation if any felony or misdemeanor conviction, a criminal conviction of any law code, rule or regulation in connection with this operation of this business um, or for any moral turpitude by any owner, whether corporate, partnership, LLC, individual or otherwise, the, the applicant really wants to express um, to the city that they, are, they want to do what's necessary to, to have a new business model to prove that they can operate, to um, provide the voluntary conditions um, to, to show that they're very serious about um, this business. And then number seven, the applicant will also stipulate a 12-month plan review process subsequent to the issuance of, of a zoning certificate and a certificate of occupancy um, to demonstrate compliance. So com coming back to this body 12 months from the issuance of, of, of those uh, permits to demonstrate and show that they have followed uh, all of the conditions and voluntary conditions that are being set forth here today. Um, and then the fourth um, finding that adequate public, uh, public and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, parking spaces, traffic circulation measures are or will be provided for the proposed use. Um, adequate public and, and private facilities such as utilities, landscaping, traffic circulation measures are and will be provided for the proposed use. The proposed size will be under 2,000 square feet, and the personal uh, service use will be will require a lower parking ratio than the existing medical office. The code does not require additional parking spaces for this type of change of use. The application does not include any additional floor area to the existing building, adequate utilities, landscaping, parking, services, and traffic circulation measures are provided for. Uh, and if there are any other, if there are any questions, I'm here to respond to okay. those. Okay. Um, you said this was going to be membership-based. How, how is that going to work? Um, this um, business model is going to be similar to uh, another establishment, which is here in the city of Glendale and, and all over the country, called um, Massage Envy. Mm -hmm. Massage Envy is a um, is a day spa. Uh, they have walk-in traffic for um, from clients, and they have a membership program where an individual can, can become a member. Um, that membership, whatever that monthly amount is, that membership would um, entitle them to um, the same services, but at a reduced price because of the membership 
um, fee that they're paying on a monthly basis. This applicant proposes a, a similar approach where um, the walk-in, walk-up traffic is definitely uh, available uh, at a particular rate and charge for the manicure, pedicure, facial uh, massage therapy. Uh, in addition, the, the membership program uh, of which the, uh, the, the owner applicant is going to have to, in consultation with FMG, will determine um, what they want their membership price to be and, and how that is going to work. Um, but generally it's going to be, for example, a $10 a month or $15 a month membership fee and the services provided may be 10 or 15 percent less than just the walk up without a membership. So it will create two things. One, um, a, an additional value to the community for those members that would like to become a part of the, um, of the day spa. And the convenience for walk up traffic, um, non membership individuals as well. Okay, now um, most of your voluntary conditions are pretty standard to a lot of the ones we use. Um, on condition number, your condition number seven, we really don't have a process where applicants come back at a public forum like this. So, how would you propose to demonstrate? Um, how would you propose to document that you've complied with all of these conditions or whatever we impose? How, I mean, most of the most things related to this type of use are um, don't do anything illegal. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, how are you going to document that? I, I think uh, the easiest way to do that would be, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the uh, the applicant, owner applicant, communicating with neighborhood services and and with um, Glendale Police Department um, uh, on on a, whether it be a monthly basis and basically have a discussion okay. because. The dialogue is what's important to ensure that they're staying on track. And, and, if, and if PD and or neighbor services have some concerns, um, that's when they would be addressed on a monthly basis, whether it be telephonic, whether it be uh, via email. So hopefully if that happens, we'd know if there's a problem. And again, the, the applicant really wants to, to demonstrate transparency. The, um, um, for example, Personal files will be held for each one of the, um, any employee. Uh, each employee will have to sign um, the employee manual section of that, which is what you have there in the operations right. security plan. That will be documented. The background check will be in that personnel file. So whether it's an occasional visit by PD or neighborhood services, they can always look in the personnel file to ensure that those parameters are, are being met with employees. Okay. I mean, you understand, obviously, that conditional use permits are issued to property, so um, whoever, if we grant this, anybody can operate it, whether it's your client for a couple of months, somebody else can come in. So, um, the so, so again, we, uh, we don't, <laughs> and yet the behavior and these types of conditional use permits, it's obviously the operator that's the key. No. Exactly, and, and, whether, and whether another condition is imposed to indicate that um, should there be a new, uh, new ownership that the conditional use become null and void. Yeah, we, we can't do that. That's really not legal. So that hasn't been legal for decades now. So, um, yeah, so we, that's not something we can do. Um, again, that's one of the issues with conditional use permits. Uh, like we get a lot of alcohol-related ones, and and it's usually the operator that's the key. And yet we we issue these things to property. So uh, unfortunately, uh, new operators inherit the past. And and one of the goals of having conditional use permits for some of these uses is that we can deny them or revoke them when there are problems. So um, I know your your client's asking for a another chance basically to operate differently. A um, couple more questions. Your floor plan indicates no, I mean it's just a floor plan, it doesn't indicate walls added or removed. 
is this the way the property is on the inside right now or does it have to be uh, remodeled to make it look like that it's going to be remodeled okay are these two occupancies is there a connection between that can I walk back and forth between the two right now um, well right now you can however can. the new the the the, the new um, floor plan that you see that's on the left side which is the proposed right. um, there will be no access to okay. the other so no doors or right no. now right now it's it's uh, there is an interior connection there is because they were operating they're not operating at all they're so there, nobody's operating right no. now in either space no. no and the future tenant on the one to the east is to be determined. We don't know what that's going to be. We don't know what that okay. is. We don't know that, right. that whether or not it's going to be a medical office or not. We so, just know that. Yeah, so there will be some remodeling required on the inside to yes. make it look like this. Okay. Yes. Okay. And again. The uh, building permits for that. Yes. Okay. In the police department, um, I think it was the police department. Yeah, Lieutenant Fox had mentioned that one of the things he mentioned there was still an ad on the internet advertising erotic massages. You know anything about I that? I know nothing about that. You know, matter of fact, um, you know, I wanted to get clarification from Lieutenant Fox on on where did that he, was. Yeah, because did he did he mention anything about that? No. No. Okay. Okay. Um, so there's no signs up or anything right now. We do have we do have um, pretty strict sign regulations. So your your clients going to have to be careful about no banners, flags, pennants, portable signs. Have to be careful with window signs. Get permits for all signs if exactly. this thing is granted. If not, then um, you won't have to worry about that. Um, you've got. Three rooms identified on the west side: skin care, room two, and room one. Uh, what happens in those rooms? Okay. Oh, yeah. R room room one, two, and three would be for massage therapy. Okay. Um, skin care. You have the skin care room. One, two. And of course, in the front lobby, you're going to have your reception area right. and the area for the manicure pedicure stations. Okay. Who's responsible for maintaining the outside of the property? Does the property owner take care of that, or are the tenants? It, property it, owner takes property care. Property owner, it's a little strip mall. Excuse right, me, a little right. strip mall. So the property owner would be taking care of, you know, landscaping and such. Right. All clean up and everything that isn't uh, doesn't rely on the tenants to do that. That's correct. Okay. All right. Let's see if anybody else has something to say, and you'll get a chance to make some closing comments if there's if you feel the need to do that okay thank you very much okay you're welcome okay I have two more cards and um, first card is from Sonia Sonia here all right and again give your give your last name too Wong okay all right. And again, g give your name for the record, please. What's the name? What the fuck does it mean? No, say your name so oh, we so get it on the record. Okay. And uh, so t tell me what you think about this application. Uh, the first thing I oppose, I came from the prostitute country. And I know this thing, I'm, but I'm not the prostitute. I'm not. <laughs> But I know inside out, I oppose because this place used to do the prostitute service. And when people said, I change, I change, it's easy to say it verbally or on the paper, but practical, it's hard to do it. When you put men and women behind the door, 
together and with minimal cloth, let the audience know cloth, what happened behind the door. I even used to ask my former Prime Minister of my country, why we let the, our country go down like that? He said he agreed with me, but by himself he cannot change the country. You see how difficult to change the, recent, the recent relationship between men and women when they are behind the door. Even here on the news not very really long ago, our former Vice President Al Gore still on the news and people found his underwear with chocolate left behind in the room. What does it mean? When you put men and women massage inside it, behind the screen door. Well, <laughs> I oppose. Okay. And when we have a history of this, <coughs> and even that the son of the judge of the other country is, uh, I forgot the name. When, that's one. Went to Thailand. He sold the girls from Thailand to U.S. a lot. They said pro. I do not know how many. And he even killed the girls in Thailand. So ship here. What the girl doing here? They know education. They know nothing. Not even really speak in English. What they do? Massage. They open the place, the training for massage. What do they do? That's the other question. And I met in the restaurant. I heard the the master's woman, she talking about the man, give her a tip, $20 tips, tie on his, what do you call I don't want to say that. Tie the rubber band, $20 bill on the tip of his. <laughs> and let she get the tip. What is that? It means master. If you don't oh, take off the underwear, how could you tie money on this one? Okay. And oh. I oppose. Okay, by the way, if you want a copy of the decision, I... I I need your your mailing address. You've just got Lincoln Avenue. Uh, I can't send you. Is it a, dangerous for me? I just don't no, want we can't, to keep my address. Well, well, then we can't send you a copy of the decision. Then I can come to the city and I ask. The okay. Employee. Yeah, you can do that. Uh -huh. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. You're welcome. Um, and Bill, is your last name Wong? Wong. Okay. And again, same same thing. If you want a copy of the decision, you have to give us your complete mailing address. Otherwise, you won't get it. Okay. Mm. Hi, <clears throat> this is Bill Wong. <clears throat> I op oppose to the uh, the location of this this uh, this elusive business. And same thing, we came from uh, this this property. Lo the the location, if you look at the map, right across. By the way, this is a, a lot of residential uh, in this neighborhood. Now, there are a lot of uh, the home, uh, apartment buildings, and just right across the street from this property, this uh, business, it is a park. Mm -hmm. A park, there are a lot of small children, uh, people, they, they go over there, and that's not safe, okay? And not mention all the uh, residential, they, in the evening, when they cooler, they walk or during the day. Now, on the side of the property, the, the freeway uh, access ramp. Along the freeway access ramp, just next to this property, there's a lot of bushes. Now, something happened down there, no one can see. And I don't think the, uh, the police will have the resources just try to monitor what's happening down there. Now. This kind of business is is attract a lot of uh, I tendency attract a lot of people who who like this kind of activities, and that can pretty much uh, cause is endanger the uh, life and safety of the children and the people live around them that this neighborhood. Do you have any, uh, if you live in the neighborhood, the previous operators, has there been any effect on any other adjacent properties that you know of? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the, they, all of them, they, 
that we are we are afraid of those especially sex predator just like Megan's law. But I mean, have you have you had any? Have there been any documented problems in the neighborhood because of the this business? Okay, not anything happened yet. Specifically, no. Okay, but overall, yes. Uh, burglary, breaking, and stranger walk into whatever the property, and that's a negative impact to the neighborhood. That I know of, and okay. just like uh, there's a, I would conclude just like this: if that walk like a duck, sounds like a duck, it is a duck. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Now we've got representatives from neighborhood services and police. Does anybody want to say anything, or Renee? Okay. Renee Sada, Neighborhood Services Inspector, Code Compliance. Okay. Um, I just want to clarify one thing that I, Mr. Charleston alluded to when the when the current business owners, uh, the applicant, uh, took over the business in 2009. Um, there was an arrest made on uh, February 19th, 2010. When I went out... Uh, based on this information received from the police department on February 23rd, I believe, sorry, um, to issue my notice to uh, cease operations without the valid CP, et cetera. There was a subsequent incident with the Glendale Police on February 28th, 2010, where an uh, undercover officer went into the business, ordered a massage, was led to a massage room, the officer didn't fill any paperwork or sign in. He wasn't asked if he had any, med med any medical problems, and he was given a one-hour massage uh, for $60. So just to clarify, there continued to be violations after they were noticed and after the current uh, business operator took control of that business. So I just want to make that clear. Okay. Have you seen any other sort of secondary problems? Um, anything on the outside? Any Any other zoning violations or any other disturbances? They were that, previously that cited for sign banners, really? uh, I think a portable sign, yeah. things of that nature. Okay. Um, site maintenance, I'd, I'd say it's below average. You have a lot of different businesses in that, on that right. site. It's not the most pristine uh, piece of property in the city. Yeah, again, only this little sliver is in Glendale. The rest right, is in yeah. L.A. Um, other than that, just uh, obviously the, the activity, the legal activity and violations of the uh, conditional use permit and operating without a conditional use permit. Okay, but they are closed now, as far yes, as you know? Yes, yes. I haven't had any additional uh, reports or okay. calls for service since uh, that date. Since the February, February incident? Right. Okay. Okay. All right, thanks, Renee. Okay, thank you. Anybody from police, or are we pretty much covered? Covered? Okay. All right, then, let me ask um, Mr. Charleston um, to come up. If you want to address any of the, the comments made by the speakers, feel free to do so. <clears throat> Dante Charleston. Um, well, relative to the first two um, speakers, um, We have put and are putting in place the proper procedures, policies, procedures, training, et cetera, and communication with neighborhood services and police department to ensure that the activities of the past does not reoccur. And again, um, you know, this particular applicant had one issue, as I alluded to, and uh, that uh, individual who um, was arrested, was terminated. It wasn't anything sanctioned by uh, the the applicant. It was a leftover employee from the previous uh, business, and um, so that is that. Now, relative to the other incident that um, neighborhood services indicated, yes, the the applicant was not um, was not careful in that. 
the the procedure was that that a chiropractor and or medical person would review an individual prior to any massage services, um, and and that did not occur at that particular time. There was no unlawfulness in terms of police action, but that but yes, that was a violation of one of the conditions of the conditional use permit. And again. Um, after FMG became involved, which was in February, is that when they when they hired you in February? Um, yes, 2010. Okay. We basically said, look, <clears throat> cease everything. There was a notice to to cease and desist from neighbor services. Stop. We, we need to reevaluate. We need to evaluate what's going on here, and these are the things we need to do in order to um, uh, make this business work. And and from that point forward. The applicant has been very forthcoming, and 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 we have been very forceful in that. These are the things that needs to happen. These and the level of understanding of these procedures need to happen, and we're going to provide that for them. And and all they really need is an opportunity to to show that that they're not a part of the past um, the past incidents of of the site. This this site. The site, this business can be uh, an advantage, um, an additional amenity to the community. It just needs to get over this hurdle. And with with the new business model, with everything else I mentioned before, they can do that. And it could be a new beginning uh, for this location. How about the idea of the closed rooms? Why can't they have a more open floor plan? Why why do you need the if it's therapeutic massage? Why can't you? Why do you have to have um, rooms with doors on them? Well, when we when we look at when we look at any massage therapy, whether it be at the Ritz Carlton, or uh -huh. whether it be Massage Envy, or whether it be individuals that are going to have massage therapy, you know, people are you know don't want an open environment. Now, you know, um, that's just kind of human nature. We are going to um, provide all those safeguards so that there's not any illicit activity going on. But f the fact of the matter is, massage envy, the, any other mas um, day spa environment are going to have enclosed rooms. That's for the pretty typical therapy. of the That's industry. very typical. Yeah. It's very typical. And and you know, as a you know an indiv you know an individual that's going to have reflexology or or massage therapy. Um, you know, we all are modest, and you know, we don't want walker by, walkers by to to um, to peer in. And and so, if the if the city has some additional requirements relative to the the door and the windows and or anything like that, then yes, the the applicant will will comply with whatever condition that uh, the city feels appropriate. Okay, I don't have any more questions. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And with that, I'm going to uh, close the case, take it under submission, and I'll be uh, issuing a decision in writing shortly. So everybody that's actually given us their complete mailing address will get a copy. So uh, thank you, interested parties, for coming. And we'll move on to the next case. Okay, next case is uh, located at 2612 Honolulu Avenue, and it's a consideration of revocation of conditional use permit, case number 10774-CU. This case was continued from August 25th, 2010, and the name business is The Mix. The business operator is Gerald Cuco, property owner is Mike Ferraro, and probably others. 
And um, this is, again, consideration of the revocation of conditional use permit, case number 10774-CU, granted on March 9th, 2005, to allow the continued on-site sale, service, and consumption of alcoholic beverages, public dancing, and a billiard establishment at an existing tavern located at 2612 Honolulu Avenue in the C2 Community Commercial Service Zone Height District 1 and uh, partially in the, also in the R1 Low Density Residential Zone Floor Area Ratio District 2 described as lots 258, 259, 293, and 294 of track 2535. And consideration of this uh, revocation is based on the fact that State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control issued a notice of ABC license suspension on February 25, 2010, uh, thereby the use is in violation of the conditions of approval of the conditional use permit. So I'll have uh, Kristen ask, give us an overview of why we're here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kraus. Uh, just to reiterate uh, what you already stated, consideration of this conditional use permit is based on the fact that the State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, ABC, uh, issued a notice of suspension on February 25th, 2010. Uh, also, the accumulation of junk, trash, and debris located at the side and rear of the property, and numerous calls to the police department for service um, for noise, disturbing the peace, and public nuisance. Um, again, thereby, uh, this use is in violation of a number of conditions of approval of the conditional use permit. These comments and concerns are documented, documented by the Neighborhood Services Section and the Police Department in memos that are uh, in the file and also attached to the staff report, uh, concluding uh, that there are a number of conditions of the conditional use permit being violated. Uh, I'll briefly go over the history um, of the site just to, to give you a little bit of background and then cover the uh, conditions uh, uh, of approval of the CUP that are being violated. Okay. Um, Starting back in the late 50s, 1959, a use variance was granted uh, for a restaurant at this location. Uh, then as time moved on in the late 70s and again in the mid-90s, a CUP was granted for dancing. Uh, and in the 80s, it was also for dancing and included alcohol sales. In 1996, uh, a conditional use permit was granted to allow billiards and dancing. And then in 1997, a use variance was granted for a cocktail lounge with dancing and live entertainment. And finally, the last discretionary action, um, which you already stated, was uh, granted on March 9, 2005, uh, a conditional use permit to allow the continued sale and service of on-site consumption of alcoholic beverages, public dancing, and billiards at an existing cocktail lounge. Uh, to go over uh, some of the conditions of approval of the CUP that uh, are being violated, um, I'm just going to outline okay. the matrix that was uh, uh, included in the staff report. Uh, starting with condition number three, uh, it states that all necessary licenses as required from federal, state, county, or city authorities, including the city clerk, shall be obtained and kept current at all times. Permits are required locally for public dancing, entertainment, and billiards tables. Um, as was previously stated, a notice of suspension by the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control was issued on February 25th, 2010, um, and at the time the staff report was written, uh, that ABC license uh, still had a suspended uh, status. Uh, additionally, when the city clerk's office was notified that the uh, ABC, that ABC had suspended the alcohol license and that the business was no longer operating, uh, permits from the city clerk were canceled on March 15, 2010. Uh, these permits included amusement machines, arcade devices, billiard room for 11 tables, dance, and live entertainment. Uh, conditions six and seven uh, relate to the conditions of the property. Condition six that parking areas shall be kept in good condition at all times, free of re weeds, trash, uh, and graffiti, with landscaping areas maintained with live plants uh, and an irrigation system. Condition seven, that the premises shall be maintained in a clean and orderly conditions, free of weeds, trash, and again, graffiti. Uh, in the memo from Neighborhood Services dated March 24, 2010, it's noted that there's been an accumulation of uh, junk 
trash and debris located at the side and rear of the property and some uh, photos have been posted up on the on the board behind you condition uh, number 10 and condition number 17 uh, condition 10 that all music lighting noise and odors shall be confined to the occupancy as to not disturb occupants of other businesses or properties and patrons on the public right-of-way and condition number 17 that the proprietor and his employees shall make an active and conscientious effort to keep customers and employees from trespassing on other nearby properties or otherwise making disturbances in the area maintaining order on the premises and in the parking lot to the satisfaction of the police chief uh, the police department um, in a, a, a memo recorded approximately 102 calls for police service at this location from August of 2008 uh, through March 15, 2010. The majority of these calls were for noise, disturbing the peace, and public nuisance. And finally, condition number 13, that the service of alcoholic beverages shall be in full accord with the regulations and conditions established by the State Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control. Um, again, I, I mentioned that there was a suspension from the Department of uh, ABC was issued on February 25, 2010. However, in an incident report from the police department, there was an event held at this location on March 13, 2010, which was uh, obviously after the ABC uh, suspended alcohol license, where officers observed red plastic cups, some filled with liquid that appeared to be beer, and some empty beer cans that appeared to be recently placed in the dumpster. Uh, based on these violations and the conditions of approval, this establishment constitutes a nuisance to the neighborhood and community, and therefore staff recommends revocation of the conditional use permit. Uh, I just want to point out that there was an email submitted um, that's included in the file by a longtime resident in the area stating that there's always been problems with the establishment uh, at this property and that they've had a negative effect on the neighborhood and the community. Uh, this concludes my report. I'm available for any questions, uh, and representatives from Neighborhood Services and the Police Department are also present. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Who's going to represent? Is there anybody here to represent the actual business owner? No. Okay, so then I guess that's left to the property owner. Mr. Ferraro? Yeah. Why don't you come up and tell us what you think, whether or not we should consider we should actually revoke this or why we shouldn't. But, and give your uh, name for the record, please. Uh, my name is Michael Ferraro. Okay. Well, you've you've heard the um, concerns. Uh, do you have any information that you would like to pass on regarding those? Well. Um, both my wife and I are, are the owners. Uh -huh. We have been for uh, about 30 years now. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is I want to, on behalf of my wife and myself, uh, offer our sincerest apologies to the neighborhood, to the neighbors surrounding the property, and also to the Glendale Police Department for the problems that they've had with this business. Uh, we're deeply, very, we're just sorry about this whole thing. Uh, it wasn't our intention uh, to have our property turned into the mess that it currently is, and I mean a mess. Um, this operator, Gerald Kuko, uh, he was operating there on an assigned lease. I never had uh, negotiations with this man. The lease was assigned by the person that owns, uh, actually, and has the current lease, uh, by the name of uh, Mr. Baja F. Tech Car. And he's the one that uh, applied for the conditional use permit. I believe in the beginning, yes. Yeah, his he, name is on the, uh, yeah, the 2005 conditional use permit we're, that we're talking about um, revoking. Okay, that is correct. And and subsequently, he sold. Uh, the property to this Gerald Kuko, and well, he, so he has this current current lease with you, uh, Mr. Aftakar. Yes. Okay. And uh, how long is that good for? 
Well, that runs until 2012. I believe it's November. Uh, no, excuse me, that's September 2012. Okay. And he's not here or hasn't? He, no, he hasn't. Not and, and from what picture? I understand, he's moved out of state. He's up in Oregon. Okay. So there's a legal issue <laughs> currently pending with him. So who do you get? Who do you get your money from? From him? Uh, well, I haven't got no money <laughs> oh. from anyone. Uh, that is the problem. I mean, he owes me tens of thousands of dollars. He quit paying rent in uh, in February, um, and uh, so in that my legal end of that with Mr. Cuco ended here in the Glendale court about a week and a half ago. Oh. Uh, so. Uh, so he's out of he's out of the picture. Cuco is now out of the picture. Okay. But the problem was, and I'd like to explain to the neighbors that we couldn't even get in there to clean the property because we had no legal right to come come on there until a, uh, really uh, uh, maybe a month ago, thirty or you know, a couple of weeks ago actually. Uh, since this. Baja Eftekar is still really on the lease, and I have not yet gone to court with him. Uh, it's really uh, uh, technical whether I'm even allowed on the property at the present time. But uh, I did. I did enter the property uh, uh, about a week and a half ago uh, with uh, people to clean up the place. Okay. It was a mess, trash all over in the, the Gerald Cuco, when he left, he left the inside in shambles, just in shambles. I've had four people there working probably almost three complete days just cleaning out the the inside. Uh, we went through, we had to go through a legal action on there uh, for him to come back and pick up uh, his personal property, which he only took uh, certain items and left, left the rest in trash. So... It, the place is a mess. So what's on the, are the billiard tables all still there? No, they're all gone now. He billiard came, table, in fact, those that's were the only his? thing he took with him, was the things that were, uh, you know, uh, that could be resell, uh, sold. The rest of the furniture, everything, it's... So the tables were never yours? No. The inside, okay, so all, all right. So the billiard tables are gone? Yes, right. sir. Okay. So you can oh. see that uh, we, we didn't intend for this to happen. I've... Uh, uh, lived in uh, La Crescenta, Montrose area since uh, from uh, since 1959. We moved uh, 20 years ago, but I've spent almost 25 years in that place. I have other business interests in, in that area still, and uh, it's it, it just I, we hate to see what this property has turned into. The only thing we could say is it will never happen like this again. I'm offering to the community a situation where. Um, well, let me backtrack. The problem that we have here is that the building is a single use. Right. It is just set up for a tavern, bar, nightclub, restaurant. It's just been that way. It's a single use building. Um, in fact, uh, the lady, uh, Kristen, here uh, mentioned that it was, um, goes back to 1959. Someone told me that, that that place has been there since the 20s and the 1930s. Could be part of it. It was probably expanded. Yeah. yeah. It was known as the, uh, someone told me it was known as the Black Widow Cafe back then. <laughs> so, Never but, heard that one. Yeah. Well, so, um, uh, but the situation is this. Uh, uh, what I'd like to offer up to the neighbors and, and, and give them my, my solemn promise um, that in the future, with another operator, it all gets down to the operator. That, I mean, that's what it gets down to. It right. gets down to who's operating this business. Uh, that I would bring in the neighborhood uh, in a meeting, actually have them help me draw up the lease, and uh, put protections in there. Uh, and one of the things would have to be that I'm notified immediately. And, uh, Mr. Krause, this is what I would like to ask you. What happened to neighborhood services? 
the way I found out about this is somebody sold, sent me an article from the the local uh, news uh, was it the news press or uh, yeah news press news press uh, they sent me an article and that's when I was first awo made aware of the problem. So you don't pay regular visits to the neighborhood anymore. Well, I don't go down there in, inside uh, right. the thing there. I was down there in uh, I believe it was October when they were filming. Okay. Uh, they did a film over there, and the property looked fine. Looked like it was being taken care of. But so what? What? Mm -hmm. um, let's get down to the basics then. Um, again, we have no direct control over the operator, so just we issue it to the property and. Again, when things go south, then we take action. And if they don't get corrected, we we're, then we sit here talking about revoking the discretionary permit. That's the way it's set up, especially the conditional use permits, especially things related to alcohol. We always give people a chance, and well, not anymore, but um, if things don't work out, we, we revoke it. So what, you know, I, I can revoke it, I can suspend it, which doesn't seem terribly uh, productive, or I can modify modify the whole thing. Um, it's set up as a restaurant, like you said. So, uh, you have any intentions of changing it from a restaurant to something else? Well, Assuming that your lessee is out of the picture, what you know tomorrow? What would you do if you had total control? Right now, we're just trying to get the place rented. Uh, to another the restaurant market out there is terrible for for leasing okay. large properties like this but uh, without uh, you know it would have to go back to a restaurant bar situation I mean okay. that that is what it's set up uh, okay that is what it's set up for but it doesn't have to be a billiard establishment though does uh, it no not no not necessarily no so it doesn't have to have dancing either that I don't see how that property would work without it because of the size it's that the problem we have is that I always try to attract a national chain there. Yeah. They just won't come to the foothills. They'll go to Glendale where they'll draw from the yeah. foothills. But it must be that they need more population than that. So uh, although I would prefer a, uh, a, uh, a large uh, corporation type run restaurant mm -hmm. nightclub to go in there, um, the reality is, I, I don't, I don't know. It always seems that it always be, it it would always be kind of local ownership. By the way, I've also, in the sense that when I found out about this, um, I've installed a uh, a separate phone line, uh, so that if uh, if I could still have that continu con uh, conditional use permit on the property, I'd open that phone line up to that neighborhood. And by golly, if I ever heard one thing, any type of noise or any type of problems coming out of there, they're free to call that line, and I can guarantee them I would be down there, and I would be taking care of the problem. I would want to be made part of this process now, where I felt in the past, without neighborhood services calling me or the police department, no one's contact. You said the conditional use permit follows the property, but right. yet I, ha I was never notified. Well, uh, that's kind of your job to see what your tenants are doing. It's not our job to babysit the property owner. But to, to do that, it, it, I'd have to go down there. Yeah. Part of that the situation, uh, yeah, nightclub situation, every night to, to monitor. And well, that maybe not, be maybe not every night, but... Um, okay. Let's see. Well, what else, what else can we talk about? Um, do you know the status, the current status of the liquor license, I I'm sure that's because that's issued to Cuco, not yes. That's a person that doesn't okay. run with the land. That's all right. right. So he's out of the picture. So yes. unless he sells it to somebody that's going to lease from you, they're not going to be able to use that license. Well, he no, he them. is the legally out of there now. He's right, but I mean, I mean, unless he sell, finds out who you're leasing it to, mm -hmm. sells the license to them, him, her. They're not going to be able to use that liquor license. That is correct. That They'll is have to finished. bring their own liquor license with them. Uh, that's, I, I believe they, there's uh, some allowance for a transfer, yes. Okay. Um, hang on. Kristen, do you know when the place actually closed? Well, when, when was the um, license suspended? Uh, February 25th. Okay. 
they skipped out. They owe Glendale Power thousands of dollars. Yeah. They've had, I've had a uh, reinstitute electricity hey, to the property. They've uh, skipped out on Crescenta Valley water for thousands of dollars. Uh, this person, uh, quite honestly, Mr. Krause, is really the proverbial tenant from hell. Yeah, well, they're, they're gone. Uh, what you also have to be concerned about as the property owner is if, um, even if I don't revoke this, um, if you don't get somebody in there using, you know, meeting all of these conditions within a year, it's going to terminate anyway. So if you don't, if I don't revoke it, um, not too many months from now, it's going to it's going to die of natural causes. Well, we're going because if you don't use a conditional use permit uh, within a year period, it it expires. I didn't know that, but. No. Um, we are actively looking right now. Okay. So so you need to be aware of that. Yes. And then all your rights and privileges are are gone. There's no uh there's no appeal there's no appeal process to that. Well, I can assure you this this property is a major part of my wife's and I's retirement here. A uh, major part of our income. This is hurting deeply um uh, tremendously. Um so uh, we will do whatever we can to market this, and, and but get uh, this time a good operator, a good operator where we could sit down to them and really let them know okay. what needs to be done here. All right. Well, let's listen to see if any. There, we have some other speakers. Let's let's see what they have to say, and we'll give you a chance to make some closing comments. Then, if we can resolve this. Okay. We have a couple more speaker cards. Um, uh, Rhea Isaacs. Hi. Um, my name is Rhea Isaacs. Um, I live directly behind the mix. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a vested interest in revoking this permit. Um, you can say that it was Mr. Kuko but this property has been a problem for many, many years. When Baja ran it, it was still loud. Uh, there was urination on the street. It was, it was a little safer than when Cuco took over because there were no guns and knives and there wasn't the biker crowd, but it was still attracts a very seedy type of people that go to this establishment. Uh, prior to that, when it was Lady Jane's, it was no better. So, and I understand that this is your property and you need, and you should be able to make money off of this. But as part of the neighborhood, I ask that you put in a restaurant that closes at a reasonable time, that we don't have to hear this music and peeling out at 2 o'clock yeah. in the could, morning. Could you, could, you need to speak into the microphone okay. so it picks up. Um, okay, so uh, that, that is my request. Um, yeah. I'm all for, for the owner getting his money out of his property. But at the same time, you know, um, my quality of life is diminished by um, having to um, put up with this till 2 o'clock in the morning, um, seven days a week, um, where I think now we're getting a Trader Joe's a block down the street in 2011. So I think you might be able to attract a better uh, business coming in here now. We're cleaning up this section of, of Montrose. Um, that, so that's 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 all I have to say. Um, let's see. Do we have any hours of operation conditions on? Well, bars generally close at two, and that's yeah. they. That's yeah. what they did. Eleven a.m. to two a.m. seven days a week. So that's right. really not any limitation. And they were supposed okay. to have someone patrolling the yeah, parking lot. Yeah, security guard after nine p.m. Did that ever happen? They might have had somebody out there, but it, it certainly didn't um, lessen people blaring their radios as they left and yelling and peeling out. So none of that, um, you know, when, when I first went to, um, to the city in 2005, that was one of the conditions. 
that they uh, put a, uh, a parking guard out there and that there, should, there was no parking allowed on my street, Sycamore Avenue, and they posted signs. Prior to that, they would park right in front of my street. And then when they would come out from the bar, uh, there were used condoms on the street, uh, beer bottles. They arrested, when they did check the place out, they arrested six people or ten people over six weeks for public urination. So at that time, when we had the first meeting, I asked Baja, do you have bathrooms in there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they're all urinating on the street. Was it they're just loitering? Yeah, just on after their way leaving, to the car? they yeah, after leaving at two, they just uh, hooked up a lot of used condoms on the street. So it, I just this area, um, the clientele that goes there. Uh, well, what do you what do you think causes the? Uh sort of problem clientele what part of the operation do you think it was do you have any idea what well what could change for the next operator um oh, the dancing the the, the I, alcohol the, or the billiard tables all all three <laughs> well no the, the um you know leo's down the street has no problems. You know, what do they it's have? A, they have it's alcohol. A, it's a sports bar. They have alcohol. Know. Yeah, they have alcohol. They have no dancing, though. No, right? they have no dancing. I think they have it, it's how the many dancing. billiard tables? I don't know if they have billiard tables or not. Yeah, but it, it's Very something nice. about um, the. Is it the size? I mean, Leo's is a lot smaller. Leo's is a lot smaller. It is. I don't really know what. The problem with that place is, is uh, it okay. just is a problem. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have Calvin Larson. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Calvin Larson. I know many people who live in the area. I do not live in the area. I live in Pasadena okay. on Glen Oaks. The same, same Glen Oaks is just, we spell it different. We, we haven't yeah. learned. A little more space. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we know it's two words instead of one. <laughs> but anyhow, um, I was just concerned. My friends have to work. They're, they're not retired. and. They were concerned about it, and I told them I'd come to the meeting to find out what's going on and get some factual information. The neighborhood is full of rumors and bad information. One thing I can say is it looks very nice now. The building recently, That's closed. in the last week or so, or maybe the last month, it looks vastly improved on the front. It's all well kept, and it's mm -hmm. clean, it's tidy. Right. One thing seems strange to me is that tenant causes a problem and you punish the landlord. Uh, he's just trying to rent his property. But maybe that's how it works. Thank you. Sometimes, yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, we have one more speaker, Roberta Medford. Hi. Um, Hi, my name is Roberta Medford. I live on Sycamore. Um, my house is actually two houses to the west of, of what shows there on Agner. So um, I have to tell you, I sympathize with my neighbor, but I'm a little further away, and I guess I'm a sounder sleeper, so even through the, the worst of the tenants, I've never really been personally bothered. But I do walk by there uh -huh. all the time, and... Um, I decided to speak because you were going into the future uses of the property, and I'm, I'm very interested in that because I live nearby. Um, it's, it's funny, you know, I love to eat, drink, dance, and play billiards, but I would have never gone All into at the, the same time? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I would have never, ever patronized either the mix or whatever it was called beforehand because of the the you know, down market nature of the clientele 
and my husband and I walk, walk in the neighborhood all the time, and um, they the mix always left its big. Um, it's actually their side doors, but it's it's on Honolulu. They left those doors open, and the cigarette smoke just poured out. So that was in days gone by. Well, no, this was after the smoking ordinance, so of course, but of course they're smoking in there anyway, yeah. and they were leaving the doors open to have some actual air to breathe, I guess. So anyway, um, it's not the kind of establishment I would have ever patronized, even though you I, live right nearby. I live nearby, and like I said, I, I'm in favor of all those activities, just not in, in quite a such an antisocial way. And of course, they have their own huge parking lot. Yeah. Why do they need to park on Sycamore at all? I, that, that part I've never understood. And um, the, the whole bathroom issue is just, you know, beneath consideration that, <laughs> that they can't use the toilets in the establishment. So obviously the party was continuing on long after, after two o'clock the closing yeah. time anyway so no no excuse for that but I wanted to speak because um, I, I don't think there's anything inherent about dancing that causes people to act like pigs or billiards or even drinking and eating and you know if there's just some way of attracting a more neighborhood um, you know, decent clientele. We would love to have a, a restaurant there. We need. We, you know, we always need more restaurants, and um, I, I would patronize it. I, I live right there. So. Yeah, I don't know what the issue was. It's a combination of the size and all that, not being able to attract a certain. Well, it could just be a reputation too, and then you know, it's a pretty quiet area. And, and again, we with land use with zoning rules, you can't really. You don't have totally. They're no, designed to take care of the secondary impacts, and when that is a problem, then we're here. Like I said, then we have to do something about it, including but not limited to actually um, revoking things that we've yeah, approved and in I, the past. I have to tell you, I I'm not up on the issue for revoking it, but you know, I would hate to see. You know, it's a very very big property, and I worry if it's not a restaurant it could be it could be a lot worse in terms of impact on the neighborhood like parking and traffic yeah. so um, anyway yeah, and we don't have complete control of that um, right. whatever uses are permitted in the C2 zone exactly. regimes so what I am just I asking encourage, you, encourage them to try and um, get a clientele that would I mean a, a business that would attract the actual neighborhood as far as the clientele because we're we're there and we eat and like I said drink etc. Yeah. But not at not at a not at a crappy place. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. Do we want somebody from neighborhood services? Apparently we do. Hi. Hey, good morning, Mr. Cross. My name is Tom Solo, neighborhood services inspector. Uh, just briefly, I'm not going to be repetitive. Uh, all the comments that Ms. Asp made on her report are, right, we've are got our so I'm not going to repeat those. Okay. The only thing I just wanted to clarify, because it was mentioned, was that back on March 10, 2010, uh, the proper letters were mailed out to three different uh, individuals. G and G LLC uh, was sent to 2612 Honolulu Avenue in Montrose. Mm -hmm. there was, the letter was also mailed out to a uh, Michelina Nicasio at uh, in the Santa Barbara address, and it was also mailed out to the law offices of uh, uh, James, James F. Cody, care of Angela Ferraro, also located in Santa Barbara. Um, that letter was mailed out uh, on March, again, 10, 2010. And I uh, just also want to say for the record that it is correct. I did do a, uh, a drive-by inspection of the site yesterday, and they did have clean up all the exterior. Yeah, I went by, too, yeah, and so there's a couple of holes in the building. and yeah, The holes in the back, it needs some landscape, but the, what the original yeah, stuff was on the weeds, outside. But, but I just wanted to clarify that, because that, the comment was made, but proper uh, letters were mailed out on the 10th. Um, obviously, you're in the neighborhood doing an enforcement. I mean, what, in terms of the history, what, what do you, what if anything, do you think is the the cause um, of some of the problems, the the billiards, the dancing, the alcohol, or combination of? I, I, as I've talked to a lot of the, some of the residents and the people in the area, I think it's it is is the combination of, the, of all three. It's the combination of the of the 
a crowd it may bring in. I think it was mentioned today it was a type of a rowdy biker type of crowd. Um, I think police would have better records or no, no, uh, okay. or comments of the incidents. But if in talking to the people I've spoken with, that was the major uh, concern was that the crowd it brought in. Yeah. Well, again, that's why we, I mean, there's other laws covering all of these things, but that's one of the reasons we have the whole conditional use permit process for at least the alcohol-related um, businesses. Right, right. Okay, that's just wanted to clarify okay, that. Thanks, Tom. Okay, do we have anyone from police? Thank you. Hello. Hello. Kristen, my name is Steve Davey, and I'm a lieutenant with the police department. And uh, Betsy Carrion is going to comment as well. Okay. Uh, I'll start off. I, I won't be redundant. Um, I've worked for the city in excess of 25 years. And uh, my specialties in the police department are fairly unique to this, these questions. I had previously worked on the DUI team, arresting drunk drivers, and that was about 23 years ago. Uh, I've also spent uh, a number of years in vice narcotics. So I've worked um, around and inside of this particular establishment for a number of years under the three different uh, names of businesses. Okay. And I can tell you from, from my experience in the police department, uh, it, the problems with drink, drinking, dancing, billiards, it, it's not exclusive to this business. Uh, the neighborhoods frequently have these types of problems that we've seen at Lady Jane's when you combine dancing and drinking, because uh, it usually means younger folks and they're trying to you know, engage and get dates and that sort of thing. And uh, oftentimes there's after-hour meetings between these folks and the streets around. So we need an age limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the business model, uh, if there's dancing, if there's billiards, um, any of that is going to be combined in this particular uh, location again. I can guarantee you the police department and the neighbors are going to have the same troubles again, irrelevant of who's running it. Uh, it's the nature of the people that are coming. Um, so that. So if you had a different, you, let's say you had this in the downtown area, less problems, more problems, same problems. Same problems. My same unit problems. Uh, is having similar problems to what the neighbors have described at Lady Jane's, at other businesses uh, downtown. Okay. Uh, presently. Are you better able to control it, or there's less impact because the residences are farther away? Or There's less impact because the residences are further away. There's also a unique issue with Montrose and the bars in the area. When I worked the DUI teams, what we found is that many of the um, redundant uh, routine drinkers at the bars would, not, would try to avoid uh, law enforcement detection so they drive through the alleyways. They uh -huh. drive through uh, neighborhoods, uh, taking a very circuitous route to get home or wherever it was they were going uh, to avoid law enforcement. And it's ironic because, uh, you know, there are the larger thoroughfares there, but they would drive through the smaller streets south of the location, south of Lady Jane's, or go up north of Montrose and drive through the alleys, which are less safe, right. less lit. Now, and that was a problem that we've suffered for a number of years there. Well, Montrose has changed a little bit. I mean, the, the old-fashioned bars are there's less of them. There's right. a little bit more. That's right. I mean, what, what about this um, location, if anything, could make it um, less susceptible to these problems? You know, windows open to the street, um, smaller capacity, anything at all that... I think those things would, would very likely limit the problems, but again, if you have drinking and dancing that facility, we're going we're gonna to wind up with trouble, I can assure you. We have a number of restaurants that serve alcohol. We have a number of bars that obviously serve alcohol, right. but they don't have that same model. You know, um, what is it, the um, Fat Dog? Right. Uh, Leo's. That's a lot smaller, yeah. How, how about in comparison to Leo's? sort of marketed as a sports bar, um, not the same, not the same problems. Not the same problems. 
And what's the, uh, uh, what, you know about what the capacity is, about what size that is, a third the size of this, something like that? Oh, l less than that. It's, less than it's, that? Yeah, it's microscopic compared to, yeah. you know, probably the occupancy uh, that they have at. Well, is it that the, the size just requires the business model to, to do certain, you know, attract a certain crowd because otherwise they wouldn't survive? Well, my sense is that, you know, that they allow uh, for quite a few people in there, yeah. which obviously increases volume of alcohol sales because they don't make money on people food. dancing. Yeah, They right. don't make money on people uh, serving food, I would suspect. Uh, if you've looked at the kitchen and, you know, try to find a good dining table in there that you're going to take your kids to. Doesn't exist in there? Wouldn't yeah. exist. The last time I was in there was several years ago, so right. looking at the billiard table, so I haven't, I haven't been inside in a while. So a restaurant serving alcohol would probably satisfy the needs of the community much better than allowing the dancing or the pool tables or et cetera. Matt Zakarian. Any Officer Zakarian, okay. uh, Glendale Police Department. I, uh, Lieutenant Davey filled in quite a bit there. Uh, part of what I see as a community lead officer up in that area is also to the size of that, which requires a, an extreme amount of money to operate, to operate keep yeah. going, um, along with the rent is, I'm sure, high. What we saw is uh, owner, uh, renters, leasers to doing whatever it can to make money. So they were having their Tuesday night cheap $1 drinks, as mm -hmm. that was part of, the, part of the big issue. And one of the nights that we were having a lot of the problems. So that, that I think, in itself, I, and I don't think there's any way around that because of the, 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 the cost size, of it. And yeah. you look at the smaller bars that are much smaller, more manageable, easier to deal with. Yeah, I know. We, sometimes we put conditions on that there's no happy hour or anything like that. I'm not a, not a big fan of that because if you have to put in a condition like that, it sounds like kind of a lost cause already. Um, but you know, maybe that solves part I've of the problem. Only been up there a few years. Um, well, of course, I've I've lived in the area for many many years, um, and I noticed that when I went through there back in March, that there hadn't been any kind of restaurant working, uh, an, an actual restaurant. So obviously, the 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 big business here was alcohol. With alcohol, and yeah. probably limits small amounts of food. If I remember right, it was more of the finger dish type type food. I looked in the kitchen and it wasn't a, a well working kitchen. So I, that may have been conducive to the problems that existed. Yeah, again, like you said, maybe, maybe just the whole the whole model didn't dictate that they make food uh, uh, the primary um, purpose of the visit. One, one other comment or, or request I would have actually is is whatever conditions or however this uh, is going to evolve by your decision that if there is such a thing as like no happy hour, good consideration be given to the enforceability of whatever restrictions is placed yeah. on. Because if I, there is no happy hour, that, that means I'm going to have to send my vice officers in and try to buy alcohol. You know, and it's it's yeah, like I said, I'm not I'm not a big enforce. fan of that condition because if you have to do that, there's a right. bigger problem. It costs not, us. Yeah, and, and, and enforceability and too. I, I don't. You know, some of these things are difficult to enforce. I'd rather just say no in the first place if it's going to be that that fine line. But um, again, <sighs> in, in this particular case, I mean, years ago, I guess that it was a re regular restaurant and it wasn't a problem. From what others have told me, but but lately, uh, well, I've worked again over changed. 25 years. Yeah, I think we're going back. Five years, it was Lady that. Jane's, and yeah, that's we're going back ages ago. Yeah, 40, 50 years ago, it wasn't a problem, apparently. Although people, I'm sure, drank uh, um, quite a bit then too. But I, right. I guess you know maybe there's some drunk driving, but I I, I don't get the sense there was the neighborhood disturbance. I, I think they attracted a whole different crowd. 40 and 50 and 60 years ago. Um, so, again, we can't control that directly. So, um, again, it's set up as a restaurant, so we'll uh, have to decide. Again, I can revoke it, I can, or I can modify the, modify the conditions. I'm not sure what, what the best approach is. I mean, they can always apply again at some time in the future, um, but it's going to be more difficult my opinion to get something approved again if if this gets revoked so um
And you can always have a non-alcohol restaurant right now. I mean, they, they just don't use this conditional use permit and put a regular restaurant in there. Again, I don't know who would who would go in there. As the owner said, he has trouble attracting a national chain. So when it's that big, uh, you know. I think with the economy, he's going to have more trouble with yeah. attracting even a, a good, solid owner that's yeah. trying to find a big investor that's going to actually put money into it and, and be responsible. Yeah, I mean, the building looks like it could use a little little facelifting, at least around the back. Um, but, um, again, I don't know what the inside looks like. Sounds like it needs some work, too, from what yeah. the owner says. More work than it More did work, inside, yeah. yeah. So that's more money. Somebody isn't likely to want to go in there and just um, open up shop right away without spending some money. Sure, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. Okay, I don't have any other cards, so let me ask Mr. Ferraro to come up and anything you want to say in response to, to what you've heard. Uh, one thing about the inside is structurally intact yeah um uh what i was referring to the mess that he left yeah. in the chairs were tipped over um but everything else the bar uh the two bars, bars there's one in the back uh, where, where they used to have banquets at actually and then the one up in front all of everything is intact structurally nothing has been broken uh the rear of the property that you refer to there's a um a cage around the electrical uh, that I've already contracted to have that done. In fact, I think they're starting today. That'll be torn down and a new uh, a box put in there. Um, the building uh, on the outside needs some uh, some repair and new coating of paint. Yeah, just a little, little touch-up stuff, yeah. Right. Um, I don't know what uh, uh, one of the neighbors was referring to as far as the, the cars on the outside on the street. I don't know. If there, is there any parking on Sycamore? I didn't think yeah. there, there is. Oh, there is off-street parking there? Okay. <clears throat> because I have plenty of uh, parking. I think I have. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I don't. You know what the capacity is? I haven't checked that recently. Of the, of the parking? Uh, no, of the uh, restaurant. <laughs> I used to. I, I don't okay. remember now. No. no. We've got some old plans here. I'm sure you figured that out. Um, you know, a modification maybe would be in order here, uh, like you said. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep all of the options open so I can get a, a good tenant in there. The only thing I could say uh, to you, Mr. Krause, and to the neighbors and to the police, that uh, in the future, no matter what tenant is in there, I'm going to work more closely than I ever have. I'll make the neighborhood a part of the leasing process. I will put uh, things in there that will mitigate this immediately when there's a problem I will be notified and will be on it um, things could be further done there uh, as far as noise abatement I'm thinking of a double door uh, to seal off the uh, the actual business areas there where it would be a buffer you open one bar, uh, door and uh, but, you know when one closes yeah. the, the noise is, is staying contained within the building You've got the you got the front door and then you got the side door on the east side, right? Uh, on Those the east were, side, that is yeah, correct. Okay. Yes, and I think that east side is it's where the there's the, the, there, there's problem. a problem. What probably needs a good double door right there. But I mean, there's things that we we could do here, and uh, like I said, I'll be working with the neighborhood. Uh, uh, anything I could do, and I have a direct line to myself, so. Uh, we, I, the only thing in closing, I want to apologize again. I just wish I would have no, been notified earlier on this. I would have taken care of it. All right, thank you. All and right. I'll think about this whole situation to, set, to make a decision uh, in the very near future. And right. I think as been explained before, any decision we make here, including the, the new cases, is can be appealed within 15 days to the uh, Planning Commission. Okay. Right. Thank you. So I'm going to close this case and, uh, again, take, it, take the uh, case under submission to decide whether or not it's going to be revoked or modified. And that's the last case today. So we are adjourned. Thank you for coming.